Thanks, Clive. The headlines in the southeast today. Allegations of a gang culture at a Sussex neurosurgery department and claims that complex spinal surgery was performed without adequate training. The racehorse trained here in the southeast, preparing to make his grand national debut at Aintree. And at last, some warm sunshine. The fine weather lasts through the weekend, but maybe not the warmth. I'll tell you more later on in the programme. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm Ellie Crissell. We begin this lunchtime with the claims made by a doctor at his employment tribunal that a gang culture existed at an NHS neurosurgery department in Sussex. Mansour Faruji alleges patients were put at risk at the University Hospital's Sussex NHS Foundation Trust, where police are investigating 105 cases of alleged medical negligence. The Trust says it will vigorously contest his claims, as Joe Pike reports. Are they whistleblowers or troublemakers? These two surgeons spoke out about patient safety at their NHS trust in Sussex. One was dismissed, the other demoted. Both have taken their cases to employment tribunals. Towering over the seaside city of Brighton is a hospital. It's the headquarters of an NHS trust in crisis, where Sussex police are investigating at least 105 cases of alleged medical negligence. We don't know which cases are of interest to police, but they have spoken to the family of 23-year-old Lewis Chilcott. He died after an alleged surgical error. About half 11, I got a phone call to say, um, it was a really long phone call, and, uh, and I just knew the direction of that phone call. And, um, and then, yeah, the, the, the fella finally said it. He said, I'm really sorry, but Lewis passed away on the operating table. And uh, so then immediately, you know, our lives, our lives are shattered. The Trust said that their heartfelt sympathies go to Lewis's family and friends for their tragic loss and their primary concern is safe and effective care. But today's employment tribunal documents allege the problems go back far longer. Mansour Farugi is the neurosurgeon who claims there was a gang culture in his department. He has more than 25 years experience, has performed over 4,000 brain and spine procedures, but was sacked for gross misconduct in 2022 and now focuses on private work. In his tribunal, he alleges one surgeon at University Hospital Sussex was approved to perform complex spinal surgery without adequate training, a second surgeon undertook procedures which led to a disproportionate level of deaths and a third undertook private work whilst on call to the NHS, which if true would be a breach of the NHS code of conduct. Chris Singh was the clinical director for abdominal surgery. He's worked in these hospitals for 20 years and pioneered keyhole operations to remove stomach cancers. But he was demoted in 2019 and claims the decision was made whilst he was on holiday. He had warned about changes to surgeon emergency rotors, which he alleges reduced the number of safe consultants on call and put patients at risk, and that the changes happened for financial reasons. Are you shocked by what we've uncovered? I'm really shocked by reading the reports because it's not just one report, it's repeated reports over a long period of time and the fact that those concerns of whistleblowers continue to this day. So this is just completely unacceptable. University Hospital Sussex has told us they'll vigorously contest these claims at employment tribunals. Dismissing anyone or removing someone from a leadership role is an absolute last resort. And in both cases, due process was followed and they're confident they did the right thing for the benefit of patients. In Mr Farugi's case, they also say they use an experienced external investigator as part of the disciplinary process. Mansour Farugi and Krish Singh's employment tribunals could take years to conclude. Meanwhile, the police investigation continues. Um, that uh, yes, so we'll have more on that at 6.30. A 33-year-old man from Tunbridge has been jailed for violent, coercive and controlling behaviour. Grant Jeffrey stopped a woman he was involved with from contacting friends and family and controlled what she wore. He's been sentenced to three years in prison. 
a petition calling for an immediate clean-up of Hodes Wood near Ashford, where thousands of tonnes of waste has been illegally dumped, has garnered nearly 5,000 signatures. The Environment Agency shut the site down in January and campaigners are demanding urgent action is now taken. A historic railway bridge near Lewis that was at risk of being filled in with concrete is to be sympathetically repaired instead. The bridge at Barkham was one of nine in Kent and Sussex at risk of infilling by national highways to avoid expensive structural repairs. If national highways had gone ahead and blocked this bridge with a concrete and aggregate embankment as they'd planned, that would have blocked the wildlife corridor and really spoilt a place that's cherished within the village. So we're delighted that the heritage structure is going to be saved um, and it will still be an open structure for wildlife. Now tomorrow there is a world-renowned event in the horse racing calendar. Yes, of course, it's the Grand National, with 34 horses taking to the iconic Aintree fences. Among them, off starting blocks for the first time is Nassalam, who's been trained in Sussex by former jockey Gary Moore. Our reporter Andy Moon went along to Siswood Racing Stables to meet them both. Preparing for the biggest race of them all. Nassalam loves the heavy ground, so the recent bad weather is good news for him. Easy horse to deal with, easy horse to train, um, and he's obviously got above average amount of ability, uh, which you need, um, and it, it, he must have a reasonably big heart, you know. I mean, to me, he's special uh, because I ride him every day, and he's like my best mate, really. In terms of racing, I mean, he's special considering how well he takes to the heavy ground. Nassalam showed his ability with an utterly dominant win at the Welsh National back in December. Nassalam wins the Coral Welsh Grand National. But this impressive showing is one reason he'll have to carry a heavier weight around than other runners after the handicapping was announced. To gallop through that mud at Chepstow like he did and win kind of as well as he did, you know, he, he has to have all the right attributes to do that job. Racing is in Gary Moore's blood. His horses have won more than a million pounds in prize money. Finally, to have a runner at the National is special. What would it mean if Nassalam could overcome the odds and win the big race? To have a runner in the National is one thing, but also that high in the handicap is, is, is another. But, um, you know, like, it, it, would, it would mean a hell of a lot. It'd be, it'd be great. It'd be, uh, it'd be fantastic, really, yeah. I used to watch this race as a little girl on my rocking horse, so... It's, yeah, it'd be a dream come true, really. All eyes in this corner of West Sussex will be on Aintree on Saturday. Indeed they will. Andy Moon reporting there. Now, John, see there. Hello, John. It's looking rather fine for the weekend. It is for us, yes. For punters uh, interested in the Grand National, rain could well affect things at Aintree. No such problems for us, though. Uh, as Ellie says, we are in the clear and it's going to be set fair for the rest of the afternoon. A little bit of wispy high cloud, but that won't spoil things at all. <coughs> Excuse me. A little bit of high cloud, but basically 19, 20 degrees should feel very pleasant indeed. Highest temperatures up towards Northern parts of Kent, a little bit fresher down towards the south coast with the breeze off the sea. Stays fine through this evening and overnight, just a little bit of high cloud. Later on, we'll see a bit more cloud pushing in from the west. It'll be a mild night, temperatures not falling below 8 or 9 degrees. So a fine start to another fine day. I think tomorrow there will be more cloud in the sky, but it'll be fairly innocuous stuff. It should stay dry and by the afternoon, plenty more of that to welcome sunshine to come. Again, a bit of a breeze, so fresher down towards the south coast. Highest temperatures once more will be further north. Looking further ahead through the weekend, bit of a change on Sunday. We're going to see some cooler northwesterly winds developing and dropping temperatures. And yeah, there will be some showers around through the early part of next week, by which time it will be a good deal chillier. So enjoy the warmth through the next couple of days, Ellie. That's oh my... no, just when we thought we were out of the woods. Sorry. Yes, thank you, John. That's it from me and from John. I'm back at 6.30. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.